Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's Busiest Music Nerd. Hope you're doing well. And let's do a letter from a fan here. Brian writes in, I've been indulging in more depressing music such as Little Peep, XXX, Tentacion, and Brand New. I'm worried I've romanticized the thought of dying young. I've been saying offhand quotes that I won't ever make it to 30. Do you think this music has an influence of increasing depression? I feel like... A lot of others are depressed, and I'm not sure if medicating your feelings with this music is helpful. I love your videos and keep doing great with high regards, Brian. All right, Brian, thank you for sending that in. Thank you for writing. Uh, a lot to unpack there, but let's try to do it. Uh, forgive me if I do get a little rambly because there are a lot of layers to the topics that you're discussing here. Depression in my personal experience, in the experiences of others who I've known, and from everything that I've read in terms of mood and emotion and its relation to music, as far as the impact that art can have on it, it's a little situational. Depressing music can certainly put you in a depressive mood, okay? It can put you in a depressive mood, much in the same way that a happy or upbeat or a sexy or an angry song can certainly put you into the mood that that particular song or album is displaying. You guys yourselves have had experiences where you listen to a happy or an angry or a sad song, and then you start feeling those emotions, especially if you've connected that track to a particular moment or piece of time or experience in your life uh, that carries that mood, or maybe even a different mood as well. Uh, but Feeling a little depressed off of the back of listening to a really sad song or something is, is different than having clinical diagnosed depression. And there are things that contribute to one's depression that I think are much more great, much more physical and obtrusive when we're talking about day-to-day uh, -day life. Uh, whether that be something having to do with your physiology, like a chemical imbalance, or uh, we can talk about maybe it's your living situation. Maybe you are um, uh, disenfranchised. Maybe you uh, are living under a lot of stress. Maybe you are living under some type of abuse. Uh, you're a young person. Maybe you're feeling like you're being crushed under the debt that you took out to uh, go to college or that uh, the economic outlook for you is not really all that great or that uh, because of a lack of economic opportunity, you can't pursue the same quality of life that your parents may have when they were younger. A lot of things can lead to depression. And again, I, I don't think music is necessarily sort of like a root cause of it or anything like that. However, what music can do, and I'm not saying that music is all powerful and always great and so on and so forth. If you're feeling sad, depressive music that maybe even specifically addresses the root of your sadness, which is why so many people love breakup songs and breakup albums, uh, listening to such things can certainly be cathartic, make you feel a little bit better in that sadness, make you feel less isolated in that sadness. But I do think that there is a point at which you can overexpose yourself to such things and maybe persistently keep yourself in that mood, especially if you're the type of person who maybe you're personality type, or maybe you actually are suffering from a clinical type of depression uh, to the point where you're essentially like walling yourself up in this mood and I guess only exposing yourself to messages and stimuli that are going to enhance that mood and keep you dug into it. Uh, th there's something to be said for trying not to wallow too much in the negative emotions of uh, of depression or anger and so on and so forth. Though again, still, it, it doesn't necessarily bear out as true that if you just consistently listen to a certain kind of music with a certain kind of mood, that you're always going to be exhibiting that mood. I mean, look at metal music, for example. How much metal music out there or metalcore is super hard, aggressive, angry, mad, but I mean, I'm sure you yourself are or have known uh, people who listen to metal music or maybe you're a metal head. I mean, metal heads aren't just walking around every day like, Arr, Arr. I mean, I know quite a few metal heads that are very friendly and good natured and uh, <laughs> pretty nice. If uh, listening to uh, aggressive metal music all day made them super angry, pissed off people 
who just hated everything, hated everybody, uh, th then I think we would have um, a bit more to talk about here. I, I don't think you can literally just drown in depressive music and keep yourself depressed forever. Uh, so there is that, uh, and, and nor should you even try. But I think also uh, the messaging of the music that you're listening to is important too, because I can listen to or list off uh, a lot of different artists that make depressing music, many of whom I have heard and enjoy, but I haven't necessarily come away from that song or that album thinking, oh, well, I'm, I'm not going to live past 30. And again, I think that has a lot to do with the messaging. I mean, it may be depressive music, but does that depressive music glorify suicide? Does it glorify doing hard drugs to the point where you may in fact overdose? I think that's important to take into account. And let's also note that those themes, those ideas, those messages are not necessarily specific to depressive music either. There's plenty of uh, very angry or more aggressive or more upbeat music out there uh, that certainly dives into themes of suicide and death and mortality and so on and so forth. I guess what I would say to you is that if you are feeling these feelings and they're very strong and these thoughts of your mortality are incredibly persistent, I would try my best to just do a little introspection to find out exactly why uh, you may be upset. Hey, you could try a little troubleshooting and say, you know what, I'm not going to listen to anything that's that negative. I'm not going to listen to anything that depressive and see if it alters your mood. See if it, I guess, puts you in a better state. But keep in mind, having some dark or negative thoughts every once in a while or thinking about your own passing and your own mortality, it's not an unnatural thing. It's not an awful thing. It doesn't mean you're messed up. It doesn't mean you're a horrible person. It's what you do in reaction to those thoughts or feelings that is important. Do you take action on those feelings and make some awful life-changing or lifelong decision that could impact you or the people around you negatively? Or do you try to reach out to some people who you know love and care about you and build a support system around yourself so that if those thoughts do arise or those feelings do arise, you do have a way of effectively dealing with those emotions in a healthy way or just kind of putting them to the side so you're not acting on them in a way where you or anybody else could get hurt. So while I am personally skeptical that listening to an hour of music from Little Peep can just turn on a switch and make you depressed. Uh, nobody is more aware of your own emotions than you, certainly not me. And I think awareness of one's emotions generally is very important. And you're asking the right questions here. Your curiosity is coming from a good place. And you should always be well aware of exactly uh, how well you are or aren't feeling and what may potentially be contributing to that and what you could be doing in order to uh, change your life or change the stimuli around you so that uh, you do find yourself in a better place. And I think I will leave it at that. Thank you very much, Brian, for writing this letter. I hope you uh, are doing better by the time that this video is uploaded and, uh, Again, you know, if these feelings do sort of overcome you, I do think there is something to be said for kind of avoiding things that may be triggers that push your mood into that direction and seeking out others who can either enhance your mood or allow you to talk about these feelings in an open and an honest space so that you feel better about them and you can unpack them in a really effective way and get some outside perspective on them, as opposed to just kind of sitting there isolated and wallowing in those negative feelings uh, in such a way where they could grow stronger or become more intense to the point where they become even more difficult to deal with. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. And uh, I hope everybody's doing okay. Hope everyone watching this video is is doing well and taking care of themselves all right love you love you love you forever